Hello, my name is Abdella Zurg. I'm a pediatric surgeon at the Mayo Clinic. Today we'll be talking about a little known disease called median arcuate ligament syndrome. It's also known by another name, celiac artery compression syndrome. For today, we're going to call it the median arcuate ligament syndrome. So median arcuate ligament syndrome is a compression of the celiac artery. The celiac artery is one of the largest arteries that comes off of the aorta, and it helps to feed or give blood to the liver, to the spleen, and to the stomach, and also partially to the small bowel. When that artery is compressed by the median arcuate ligament, then there's a series of symptoms that may occur in these patients. It's a little known disease because really it's controversial in the adult literature exactly how it occurs, how the pain um, manifests itself, and there really are a few people that do have compression of their artery or compression from their median artery ligament, but they don't have any symptoms at all. So for the most part, we think of this as a diagnosis of exclusion. Well, what does that mean? That means that you can have abdominal pain, you can have the symptoms of median arcuate ligament syndrome, and for the most part, that includes abdominal pain, specifically after you eat a meal that you get uh, very, very reproducible pain, uh, usually in the upper stomach. Sometimes you can have a brewery or you can feel the buzz of that compression uh, when you have your hand on it or when we listen. It can also be manifested by nausea, vomiting, and abdominal pain. That's really nonspecific. There are a lot of things that this can be. For example, it could be gallbladder disease, it could be pancreatic disease. There are certain things that need to be looked at before the diagnosis is made, and that's what we mean by a diagnosis of exclusion. For the most part, these adolescents have been plagued by this pain for several months. They've been seen by their pediatrician or perhaps even a, a, a specialist, and they undergo certain tests in order to ascertain where the pain is coming from. These usually start in a non-invasive manner, things like ultrasounds, and then as the pain continues, and as the diagnosis is not necessarily designated, then people start to think about the more unusual diagnoses, such as median arcuate ligament uh, syndrome. Here at Mayo, um, we've performed several uh, procedures, all laparoscopically, to release the median arcuate uh, ligament. And uh, we've done them all in conjunction with our vascular surgeons. Usually the, the process is that someone has thought of the diagnosis elsewhere or even here at the Mayo Clinic, and they've undergone a battery of tests to try to figure out, well, is this really peptic ulcer disease? Is this gallbladder disease, et cetera? And if no diagnosis has been made, and the thought of median arcuate ligament syndrome has been brought up because the symptoms and the history really go along with the disease, that's when we come in and that's when uh, we're consulted, both the vascular surgeons and the pediatric surgeons, to try to help identify is this really the disease that's going on and does it need any treatment. So once the diagnosis of median arcuate ligament syndrome has been entertained, we send these patients to a, a gastroenterology specialist to look at uh, or solidify is there any other disease that's going on that needs to be addressed in a different manner. And they often end up, these patients, uh, getting a reasonable workup, but that reasonable workup means that it's extensive. That often involves ultrasounds or CAT scans or MRIs. Uh, often or most of the time, uh, that involves a scope in their mouth to look at their esophagus and stomach. That can be a scope uh, from below to look at their uh, colon as well. So again, it's an extensive workup that often takes uh, a significant amount of time. But once that's done and the symptoms and the history really fits median arcuate ligament syndrome, they meet with the vascular surgeon and they meet with a pediatric surgeon or myself. And that's when we decide, okay, we think that this disease of uh, median arcuate ligament syndrome um, is probably the correct diagnosis. We um, talk about the procedure and the risks that are involved and then we proceed with the procedure itself. We've done these laparoscopically. Uh, almost all have just stayed one night, uh, really just for pain control. They get five little small incisions, each about five millimeters, one in the belly button, and then two on either side. And then we go ahead and we release the median arcuate ligament. 
What that means is that we take the diaphragmatic fibers that are crossing and we release those or cut those and then we find the artery and we go millimeter by millimeter, quite literally, middle, millimeter by millimeter, right on top of the artery and release those fibers. There are always these small, or sometimes they can be a little bit thickened, nerve plexus or nerve fibers, and those need to be released as well. That's part and parcel of the procedure. So what we do is we free up that celiac artery completely, all the way anterior or right on top of the artery, and then we free it up on either side until we see the little branches going off to the liver or going off to the spleen so that we can have a complete release. This is the same procedure that's done if you're gonna do it open. The only difference is we do it through small incisions and you don't end up making a larger incision, which is the uh, standard open uh, technique. These patients, again, um, most of the time they go home the next day and then we see how, they're, uh, how they do and uh, we've been quite satisfied with the results uh, so far. Because this is a relatively new um, advancement for um, adolescents, it's been done in adults uh, um, before, but in children there's not a lot published. In fact, we were the first to publish on uh, a laparoscopic uh, transperitoneal release in an adolescent. Um, because a lot has not been done, we're continuing to evaluate uh, what are the best techniques and does it really make a difference in their lives. Um, and uh, the ones that we have operated on so far have been satisfied with the, with the procedures that, that we've performed.